YouTubers, welcome back. And today we're gonna spray some nitrous and we're gonna read some plugs. Don't wanna miss this. All right, so before we get started, I wanna talk about the way that I'm doing it. It's not super ideal. But there's a lot of people online, I see them post pictures of plugs, which is the exact wrong way to ask, like, how does my tune-up look? And we'll get to that right now. So I see far too often people uh, take plugs out their motor, and they look similar to this. Uh, mine does burn a little bit of oil, so it'll probably be darker than most of y'all's. But they'll take plugs like this, and I can tell just by looking at this that you've had this plug in for a long time. You run it up and down the street. It's been in there for months, and then you pull a plug out, and you ask, how does my tune-up look? And that is the way you do not read plugs. You cannot read plugs that have been in there after about a month and say, how does my tune-up look? That gives you no information about your tune. Now, the only information you're gonna get from a plug like this is like, how does my idle air fuel mixture look? That is about the only information you're gonna get off of a plug like this. It's not gonna tell you to go up on jets. It's not gonna tell you to go down on jets. And I see people way too often saying, your plug is rich, lean it out, when you don't even know. You haven't pulled this out after a wide open throttle pull through all your gears. So if you look down here, I have put all new plugs on my motor right now. So let's go to the motor and we'll talk about what I'm doing next. Oh, before I forget, because I'm a forgetful dude, uh, if you haven't seen my last video, make sure you watch that one because I did all the safety checks of what you want to do to your nitrous system before you actually spray it with nitrous. So if you haven't watched that, go watch that one before you watch this one on how to read your plugs. Ideally, when you're spraying nitrous in your motor, you want to use your old plugs, let it warm up, then put fresh plugs in. I didn't do that with my motor for this video because normally I drive to the track and then I put fresh plugs into it. And I go to the line and then I hit it and then I shut it down and then I pull them all and look at them. But the track's closed, we're not going to do that. And also, when you're out there, you know, on the side of the road, I don't want to be out there that long. So I'm just going to be driving five minutes, making a hit, then shutting it down. And also, look at this. The change of plugs on my headers is a pain in the butt. And I'll show you, it is a chore. And you have to be very careful to get to some of these plugs back here when it's really hot. Check this out. All right, so that one right there is always a chore. I mean, to get it off, it's not, not that big of a deal. You can stick this up in there, you know, just by putting this here and you can have gloves on so it's not too hot and you can get it out that way but to put it back on there I don't have little Chinese hands and I can't even it's really really hard for me to stick my hand in here to thread it in so the easiest way for me to do it is to reach up underneath and grab it like that to uh, screw it in and you can imagine when all that's hot that is a chore and it will F you up all right so with that said the plan is to start it up but before I start it up, we're going to get the bottle up to the optimal temperature, make sure it's all ready to go, make sure my pump is flowing the correct fuel pressure, before we make a hit, and I'm going to start it up, and then I'm going to give it very little idle time, just enough that I can pull out the driveway, go to this testing spot, which is about five minutes away, make a hit, and then we're going to shut it down. And ooh, check this out. This is the carburetor I recently did for a gentleman. The same guy who works at the machine shop who did my short block for my S10. Uh, this guy, I rebuilt it for him, and he has an interesting combination. That carburetor is going to go on, I do believe it's a 302 that he built. It's uh, pretty, pretty much a remake of the stock 302 classes that they run in a, that they use stock untouched heads, and they do a lot of stuff to those cars, and they get them to run really good. I've seen those cars if you have a lot of money, but they're pretty much all stock motors, and they're running like, you know, 10 60s and a quarter. So he's doing something similar to those builds. And this motor he has is going to rev to right around 7,500 RPM. We're going to put that carburetor in and we're going to tune it. So that's going to be a fun video. You guys definitely don't want to miss that one coming up.
All right, so I'm hovering over here on the far side of the S10 because the wind is blowing really bad. I want the audio to be decent. I'm on my GoPro, so the audio is not as good. I kind of got out of it a little bit there because it got a little squirrely and then I got into it and I stayed in it for as long as I could and shut her down. I like to shut mine down, not right away, only because I noticed if I shut mine down like right away, uh, it'll, it'll diesel and I like to slow down, you know, get a good slowdown and then shut it off because um, I don't want the uh, transmission because it's automatic. I don't want it to spin really fast on that, you know, in the back and have no fluid pumping through the transmission. I don't think that's pretty good for it. So I like to slow it down a good bit and then shut it down. So mission accomplished, but it always seems no matter how big of a parking lot I park in, no matter how far I am from an establishment, people still have to come up to you and say, you got to leave this private property and we're called the cops. Well, they didn't exactly say call the cops, but they're pretty much hinting around to that. So mission accomplished. Let's get out of here. All right, guys. So I think the easiest way to look at all these plugs, I have them all in Photoshop. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and a reference image to explain the fire ring. I am not gonna say I'm a plug reading expert, but I do know what it looks like when you start to hurt a motor on nitrous. So we'll go over that here in a little bit. But let's go ahead and look at these plugs. But first I'm gonna explain the fire ring. There's a lot of misinformation on, you know, rich or lean. Uh, the top of your plug shouldn't be very discolored at all. It should be, the porcelain right after a hit should be pretty white. and down here is your fire ring. This actually shows your fuel mixture. This is kind of where you want it to be on nitrous. Um, there's a big misconception with nitrous where you want to run it rich, it's better. Actually, you can hurt your motor just as bad running it too rich as too lean. So you kind of want to put it right there in that sweet spot. So this is number one. And you can see down here, you can see the fire ring. I tried to get the best pictures I could. And that's not, you know, too white. There's still, you know, tan down there. And our timing, this is about where the timing is right here. If I can just show you right around here, that is the timing mark. And you want it to be away from this bin. You want it to be kind of this side. So that's number one. Nothing there. I don't see any speckles going on in the porcelain. So let's go to number two. Here is number two. And you see one little speckle there. I'm not sure if that's, you know, detonation or not. I don't think it is because here's the uh, timing. And the timing's way over here on the bins. So we're still pretty safe. If you look down here, number two is definitely a little bit fatter than number one. Not too much, but this is how you can see the difference between all your plugs as you go down. You don't want to pull one plug, and you'll see here in a second. Let's go to number three. Number three, you can see that the timing is even more towards the uh, center, which means this plug can be advanced, but I'm running a distributor, so we can't really advance or retard each plug separately. But you look down in here, this one definitely has a little more fuel than number one or number two. So number three, you know, I don't see any signs of anything being unhappy here, so let's move on to number four. Here is number four, and actually four looks pretty darn good. This probably looks the best. Maybe a little fat in here. I don't really see anything that's too bad. It's still nice and brown. Uh, the timing right here, it's not too close to the bin on the spark plug, so we're still looking good. Going number five, and aha ha See, number five and number seven are the closest on the firing order in a small block Chevy. So you look at this and the timing is still away from the bin though, so we're nothing really to be concerned about right here. But this is the one that you want to tune to. Remember, as some people have said they don't pull any timing from a 100 shot. I pulled four degrees. So you look down in here, this one's not as rich as the other ones, but it's still, I don't think it's, you know, too bad. Like I said, I'm not a complete expert, but there's nothing really here that says that, you know, it's going to be hurt. I don't see any speckles in the porcelain, so we're not having any detonation. Nothing really looks discolored. This right here, you're seeing this right here, this is because my, my motor does burn a little bit of oil. It's just going to have those. That's probably oil deposits that are just starting. So we'll go to six. And six, look at this. See, this is the fattest plug in, out of all the, my unplugs. So number six, cylinder so number six is actually the fattest. And you can tell by right here, you don't have a really defined, you know, timing right here as opposed to one of these marks. See, it's very distinct 
Actually, let's go to number four. Very distinct right here. So I'm going to go to number six. And the reason why, and this is what I think, maybe I'm wrong, but when you have more fuel in there, it's a little bit, you know, cooler in the combustion. So this looks like it runs probably the coolest. But like I said before, you really don't want anything too fat on nitrous because you can hurt it just as bad. But I wouldn't call this too bad. And nitrous, you always tune to your Lena cylinder and you kind of have to put it in a happy zone. So let's go to number seven. Number seven right here, you can see it. Uh, it's probably a little bit fatter than five, which is right next to it when it fires. I would say it probably is. So, and I don't really see anything here that says it's being hurt. Timing's right here. We'll go to number eight, and eight's definitely a little fatter than the other ones too. You can see it's a little darker in here, but I really don't see anything in this tune-up, in my opinion, that's causing for any concerns. So I'm gonna keep this, you know, I'm gonna err on the side of caution. I'm gonna always take out a little more timing than I need, and you can't just go off of one plug right here because number five, you can see right here, this is going to be the hottest plug with the most timing right there. So, that's my opinion on my tune-up. I think it looks pretty good. I don't think it's, you know, anything to be concerned about. I am going to send these photos to uh, Nitrous Express and get an expert opinion. Maybe we'll have some experts jump in on the comments below. But, you know, I don't really see anything that looks too bad to me. So I'm gonna call my tune-up good for right now until I get some expert advice. Well guys, that's pretty much all I got for you today. Like I said before, I am not a plug reading expert. I am gonna invest in some more tools and a little thing that the doctor used to look in your ear or some type of magnifying glass with light that can look down into the plug a little easier to see the fuel mixture around the uh, fire ring. Cause that's really how you wanna see how rich and how lean it is. It's really looking at the plugs. That's gonna tell you a lot better story about all your cylinders than just looking at the wide band going by one reading. So keep wrenching. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that bell for notifications and that like button. And until next time, peace.